Supreme Magus, Chapter 34, Unbelievable Speed. Leeds and Solus minds were spinning at a full gear, but for entirely different reasons. What if magical beasts are the primordial true mages? What if human mages learn true magic by watching the magical beast hunting, like Chinese martial arts derived their moves from earth's animals? Solus pondered in amazement. What can I do? I just revealed my trump card for nothing and my fusion magic is useless, since if that thing closes in, it needs only one hit to rip me in half. Not to mention that air, earth and spirit magic would probably be useless against it. I am only left with light, dark, fire and water magic. Lit trembled in fear, but his body was ready to move, his mind never giving up on life. The beak changed through its own shield, intending to make things up close and personal. Lit reacted promptly, using air fusion to gain speed and keep their distance in check. You may truly be immovable as a mountain, but you sure can keep up with someone fast as lightning. Yet the two enemies' speed was the same. The beak was indeed heavier, but the difference in physical prowess was enormous. Not to mention they were both slowed down by trees, rocks, and undergrowth. Lit felt reassured noticing that the beak couldn't close in, since he could still resort to fly as a desperate measure. Unbelievable speed. This is fast, but not that much. Eckert and his men were either too scared or hallucinating. The game of tag went for a while, with Lee throwing ice spears whenever he could spot an opening, and the beak using rocks projectiles trying to shoot him down. Lit knew that bears weren't supposed to smile, but on the beak's muzzles he could clearly see a smirk, sometimes even emitting a horror horror sound. Is that a laugh? Is that bear actually just having fun? While running, Lit moved the fight to his private clearing. He had finally found the path to victory but he needed to have both hands and legs free without worrying about tripping on roots or pebbles. Also, the river Philo flowed nearby, greatly enhancing his water magic. Not having to conjure it anymore, Lit could focus only on the manipulation aspect. The beak moved forward slowly and triumphantly. It knew the prey was now cornered. In front, there was only raging river, while the beak was plenty capable of cutting off any other escape route. But soon it noticed that something was off. Not only the smell of fear was gone, the prey had ceased to run, standing firm with the river at his back, watching the beak's every move with defiant eyes. The beak slowed down even further trying to suppress its overbearing bloodlust and looking again at the surroundings. Suddenly, it remembered about all those dangerous ice spears, realizing it was a trap. But it was too late. It had already got too close to the river. Tendrils of water grabbed its leg, trying to drag the beak in the water. The beak reacted promptly, making tendrils of earth envelop his legs and body, stopping the water in tracks. It knew it could not play only on the defense, so it fired a barrage of stones against the prey. Lita didn't move an inch from his spot, either dodging the rocks or using his own earth magic to deflect those he could not avoid. It soon became a war of attrition about whose mana would run dry frost. After a few such exchanges, Lit infused himself with fire and art magic, performing a roundhouse kick to send a huge stone back to the sender. The beak didn't miss that anomaly. 
The prey had never done such a thing. It was clearly a deception. As soon as the stump came near enough, the beak deflected it with a flick of a claw using earth magic to avoid touching it. That way it noticed that right behind the rock there was a dense blank mass. Lead's plague arrow. The bee followed its instinct and tried to dodge that slow bullet, but its own tendrils of earth were keeping it stuck in place. Before the bee could summon any sort of magical protection, the plague arrow had hit his mark straight in its huge chest. Pain started blinding the beak that became unable to notice lid closing in while shooting six more plague arrows, the first to the chest again, the easiest target to enhance the crippling pain. Then he followed striking the four limbs once to prevent the beak from fighting back, the six and last one to the head, almost at point blank for the kill. It all happened in a barely three seconds. In that very short lapse of time, the standstill has turned into a victory for the prey. And that saved Lit's life that day. As soon as Beak let out of an agonizing cry, a second one, even bigger, came out rushing from the woods. It wasn't fast. There were two of them. That's why they could not they could play the hunters like a cat with a mouse. Lit used air fusion to stay away, keeping the distance the same he previously had done with the other beak. Luckily, the second beak didn't seem interesting in pursing him and started to lick its partner affectionately. From its size, it should be a male. The only notable difference is that his fur has shades of black instead of green. No wonder the hunters weren't able to tame them apart. Solus remarked, You better make use of the time to replenish your mana. We don't know what it's capable of. Lit immediately used the invigoration breathing technique, letting the world energy replenish his lost mana and washing away his fatigue. Thanks to the good night's sleep, invigoration effect was at its peak and it would not take Lit longer to recover. After all, his body was in perfect condition. Only his stamina and mana had been consumed during the fight. Filthy human, how dare you kill my spouse? The beak spoke. Lit had no time to be surprised, so he kept his breathing rhythm steady, aiming to stall as long as he could. Wow, you talk. I didn't know bears could talk. Lowly maggot, I am not a bear. I'm Mirtu, the new king of the woods, and she was my queen, Gerda. Sorry, your majesty, but if you wanted to live happily ever after, you should have respected my turf. I don't care what you do on the east side of the woods, but the west side is mine. Not to mention that I know a rye that could refute your claim. A rye? Artu moved away from the carcass, putting enough distance from the river to be safe from the man pop tricks. You mean that weakling? The mud is as good as that. It took grind while slowly moving forward. Don't come any closer, Lit ordered. If you leave now and promise to never return, we can close it here. Otherwise, one of us will have to die. Her, her, her. Irto laughed. You will not die, murderer. I will just rip off your legs and arms. Then I'll follow your scent back to your burrow and will devour your family alive in front of your eyes. Only then we will be even. Lit dropped the act like a live grenade. I never intended to let you walk away alive from here. I only had doubts about how much to make you suffer. Thanks for clearing them up for me. Such an arrogance for a weak man pup. I will not fall for your trickery. Like my poor Gerda, I have watched the whole time. 
The only reason you are still alive is that she loves so much playing with you, Vernon, before beating your head off. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have indulged her so much. If I have killed you back then, she would still be alive. Ertu roared, getting even closer. Lid had already fully recovered and some more. If you want to so bad apologize to her, let me send you to the other side. Despite all his provocation, Ertu remained calm and collected, always keeping a safe distance from the waters. He is too confident. I have a bad feeling about this. Why does he keep advancing despite what happened to the other big? Lid fought back the temptation of using all the extra mana from the old energy in one go, limiting to a single plague arrow. Instead of dodging it, Irtu stood up on its leg, laughing cruelly. When the plague arrow hit the big's heart, Lid could see Thanks to life vision that instead of attacking its vital organ, the dark energy was being assimilated by Earth's core. Her, her, did you really think to be the only one that had mastered dark magic? Now die. Earth jumped forward and before Lit could take advantage of its inability to dodge in midair, four rock formation erupted abruptly from the ground right where Irtu's paws were going to be. That way, the beak was able to move forward once more, his speed further increased by the four rocks borrowed momentum. In less than a second, Liz was robbed of his opportunity to counterattack, while Irtu had turned into one ton bullet. To evade the attack, Lid had not only used air fusion, but also to roll forward. The beak was too fast for a real dodge. His only option was to pass under it. After that point, things got worse. When Ertu landed, instead of creating a crater, the ground stretched under its leg like a trampoline, allowing it to resume the chase without a second of delay. What in the world? You can do that with earth magic? Lit beat his lower lip hard, cursing his own ignorance. He was a self-taught after all. The only knowledge he had about true magic was what he discovered experimenting by himself. Clearly, the beak was a natural at magic and had refined its mastery over earth through the years, aptly adapting it to the best uh, hunting techniques, making it a split-second decision, Lit kicked the ground with its leg while using all the mana he could infuse himself with earth magic, boosting his defense. Thanks to the clean cut in his previous trajectory, Lit got only grazed on the chest from ear to claw. Yet it was enough to rip off his chest protector and graze the underneath skin. Lit instinctively used light version to stop the bleeding and gain a healing factor. The meteor strike had messed up the big's tempo, so after the second jump it was forced to stop. Lit used that moment of pause to activate Soaring Hawk and take flight. The opponent was clearly superior. He had almost run out of options. No escape, Irtu roared, shooting a rain of rock debris against him. Lit mimic Gerda, using air instead of earth to generate a fast spinning barrier that deflected the sudden attack. Yet his flight was interrupted and he started to fall down. It to grind, getting up on its back legs ready to catch him. He could already feel in its mouth the crunchy taste of the prey's limbs. Lit was almost out of option, almost. From that angle, he too could not notice that Lee Wright's hand was holding something, removing the stopper with a snap of the thumb. At the last second, Lee stopped in midair with float, while the substance in the flask kept failing at hit ear to right on the head. Suddenly, 
the beak was blind, his eyes burning like a fire. A strong smell inundated his nose, making him sneeze and rendering it unable to sense its presence anymore. When I bought this horrible perfume, my idea was to use it to make a beak lose my trace in case the worst happened. I never expected being forced to resort to such gamble. Luckily, Ertu does not know about Solus, not her pocket dimension. The flask materializing out of thin air was something unconceivable for the magical beast, taking it by surprise. Itu was still roaring in pain, the paws rubbing his eyes when he got stabbed from all sides. Thanks to the river, Lit's ice spear spell needed just a split of second to strike. Lit waved his hands non-stop, sending a barrage of spears until Irtu's corpse was so riddled with holes that he could see through it. And even after that, he sent another one piercing its head, right between the eyes. I always hated how in horror movies, no one ever makes sure that the freaking monster is really dead, only to get backstabbed during the credits. You took a huge risk there, pretending to have lost control of the flight spell and going into free fall. Solus had objected to that last minute continuity plan from the second lit a device it, deeming it too reckless. What if the beak impaled you with a rock spear? What if, instead of waiting for you to come down, it had jumped to finish you off? That would have been merciful. It too was too cruel to do such a thing. Lit replied without hesitation. It wanted me to feel despair and helplessness, to be conscious while it ripped me apart. In some ways, we were quite similar both hell-bent on revenge and inflicting pain to our enemies. The only difference between us is that I would never allow my bloodlust to drive me crazy. Gerda and Irtu were a threat to my family. That's the only reason I come here. I prefer giving my enemies a painless death, even making Irtu spelt worthless, rather than taking the smallest risk they could harm one of her, of my beloved one. Lid had just collected the two magical beast carcasses inside the pocket dimension when his body started trembling in pain. A familiar hot sensation rising from his manacor.